Uyghurs are a Turkic-speaking Muslim minority in China, living mostly in the sensitive frontier province of Xinjiang. And the Chinese government has been treating them absolutely terribly. These are some of the suspected detention camps, where an estimated one million Uyghurs are held. Many of them have not been heard from since being detained. Pretty much everyone has someone that they know who has been taken away. My husband received a phone call from a police official who um, said that he wanted to meet with my husband and that he had a few questions to ask. And they said that they were coming to our house. So they came into our house and the first question they asked my husband was, have you been overseas? So my husband was like, yes, um, I've been overseas. Like I've, I've traveled to Turkey. And then as soon as they heard that, um, pretty much they didn't really ask any other questions. They took my husband's passport on the spot and they said, you need to come back to the police station with us. And that, then that's when we, we got really, really scared and we were like, um, at that point, my husband was begging and he was asking, like, can you please just ask me the rest of the questions here? Why do I have to go back to the police station? And we were all kind of crying and we were really scared. And the police were like reassuring us saying, oh, don't worry, we're just going to um, ask the questions um, at the police station. And then within a couple of hours, you get to go home. Um, obviously, this was this was all a lie. Um, this was my husband's first detainment. He got questioned at the police station for three days. And then afterwards, he was taken to a detention center and he was, he was detained there. His first detainment, um, it lasted just over two years. So for two years, um, I wasn't able to, to see my husband. Um, and then it was on May 22nd, um, 2019 when um, my husband he called me himself um, through their app WeChat and he told me that that he had been released. No one at that time knew about what was going on in Xinjiang. The government was trying to keep this all a secret from the outside world. They didn't want anyone to know that there were these you know that there were these camps. During his, his time in the detention center and um, you know in the concentration camps um, he tried not to talk about it too much. Obviously, it was really traumatic for him. And because it was all still very new, you know, him just being released, I was like, I, I don't want to force him to talk about it too much if he doesn't want to. But he did manage to speak about it like a little bit. And, you know, he said um, most of the, I guess, like the, the torture that he endured in there was, most of it was like psychological, um, where you know they'd pretty much all the detainees would get told every day like you're never going to see your family again you're never going to leave these this place you know you're joking if you think you're gonna um get out of here you guys are all gonna you know rot in here and you the only way you're getting out is if you die and he said um you know that any time if anyone misbehaved or, or didn't listen um you know to the guards um, their food was taken away. So he said most of the time it was really difficult because um, they weren't given food. So they were starved a lot. And if one person in their cell, um, you know, misbehaved, then the whole cell would suffer, you know, the kind of the same um, consequence. He didn't know what he was eating, um, you know, most of the time. Obviously, then we heard reports about, you know, the detainees being given pork and stuff like that and, and I asked him as well I was like do, do you think you you ate pork and he's like to be honest I probably did I didn't know half the time what I was eating like I couldn't recognize the meat but again they were forced to eat it so when they were given the food if you didn't eat it you were also punished my husband uh, did tell me about this one time that he accidentally spoke um, in Uyghur and one of the guards heard and then um, they handcuffed him and they kind of strung him up on the door and he was left there for, for a whole day. He wasn't given any food or water. He wasn't allowed to go to the toilet. They kind of just hung him up 
by his hands on uh, on the door and they left him there for for a whole day hearing that it was just obviously like it was just so devastating and i was like is there anything more that he's not telling me you know because i mean if they did that they possibly could have done other stuff too and my husband was still kind of having nightmares um you know every night about you know everything that he had to endure all of a sudden one day the police came uh, on the night of may 19th and and they took him again the second time he was gone for about just over three months he was detained again um the first 60 days my husband was in solitary confinement um he said he almost went crazy in there he was home for about a, a month and then all of a sudden um it was in it was on the 26th of september um the next month that um police showed up again and and they arrested him again they detained him again this was the third time and this time they took him to a different city so currently my husband's being held in in Harmi in in a detention center 6 months later it was on the 1st of April 2021 that then I I received the news that my husband had been sentenced to 25 years in prison once I received this news um I was I was obviously I was so shocked I didn't want to believe it it just didn't make sense even like the pretty much from the start when this happened just none of it made sense to me that how you know someone just for going overseas how can someone be put through you know all of all of this suffering and all of this torture just because they had gone overseas and mind you he didn't go illegally you know he got a passport that was legal he got a visa that was legal he did everything um in the right way in the correct way i've been silent this whole past 4 years like i haven't spoken publicly about it at all in fear that i would make things worse for him and even in keeping silent the worst thing happened you know so at this point i was just like i don't really have any other choice but to go public with this to tell everyone what's what's going on if he is in prison then you know everyone gets visitation everyone gets a phone call everyone gets to see his family um he was sentenced in april it's been over a month now and we still have heard absolutely nothing from him i tried to get the government to help me and i haven't heard anything from them at all and at, at this point it's kind of just like um who can i expect to help me you know like all i want to do is i i want to know that my husband is is okay that he's alive because obviously i haven't heard from him in in all this time i want to know where he is i want to be able to have a way to contact him to to hear his voice to to know that he's he's someone doing okay we've been married almost 5 years but the time that we've been together like physically been together like in one place it's just a little over a year i think it's like 14 months my husband my people they're being targeted based purely on their ethnicity based purely because because they are uyghurs we should have the same rights as everybody else i i want to be a voice for my husband i want to be a voice my, for my people if i can make even the slightest difference if i can make something you know um something good come out of this situation um that that's that's essentially that's that's what i'm going to fight for and, and i'm not going to stop fighting for it and until until my husband is released and and until everyone else is also reunited with their families those women and those children and those old men that are being thrown in jails there are fathers there are children there are there 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 are bond to them is la ilaha illallah which is thicker than blood we might not see the light at the end of the tunnel we might not see the weegers fully freed but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us to see that allah created us to do whatever we can so that when we meet him we can say oh allah this is what i did about the weegers situation and perhaps in that is our salvation